the Tiki Miko introduction in. Girl, I said she's on time today. I'm what? On today, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on one second. I think it's the new um graphics real. I know I need that. Yeah, I got yours. It's yellow. It's like okay. Everything. It's cute. I oh, I'm trying to raise you up a little bit. Oh, I know how I could do this. I'm so slow. Yeah, you are a little slow. So, okay. We're not going to hold it against you. You know, see. I've been on vacation with the fam. Oh, my so. God. I know. Must be nice. To be able to vacate, it, it was. It was, especially during these times, just yeah. to get away. This, these are times that make you really appreciate having family. Cause what if you didn't have no family? Oh, I, you had family. We about to go. Yeah, no, I got. Th I wasn't talking about me. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, I about to say what? No, got family. You sure do. You have plenty family. Allegedly. Oh, we're not going to go there today. <laughs> so I'm telling everybody how they are in for such a treat because we were able to review a, a movie on the Urban, Moving. Urban, Urban Movie Channel. So you know Bob Johnson, the founder of BET, that's his network, his streaming platform. Okay. Yes, he did that. It's really good because it's movies on there that is not shown on regular, you know, TV show, excuse me, stations. And we actually, as black people, we need our own type of network besides just BET or whatever. Like for actual movies, there's no commercials. It's a lot clearer because I used to have to hold the antenna and hold one leg up to even see a movie on there. So he's mm -hmm. come a long way. Yes, um, I guess the producers too that he's using that's putting those movies out there on the platform, they actually come up with their um, equipment. Where did you know you getting feel like you're getting quality shows yeah. for us? It wasn't always mm -hmm. like that. We coming up, girl. My friend had on one of them t-shirts. I said, if you don't take that t-shirt off until he get that antenna together. <laughs> <laughs> Just back it up real quick. All that money that you make selling BET to the man. <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> we need to You're so wrong for that. Take it back. But everything else, we take it back. Bro, right. It's been like a whole month of learning experiences as far as our culture is concerned. Right. Girl, I was like, not the ice cream truck music. Man. It's so much stuff has came. Yes, yeah, so many things has came out that we had no knowledge of. But because now we are like taking a stand, and guess what? We hit in the white man's pocket. Hate to say it like that, but we becoming more recognized. And all these little things coming out, the uh, ice cream man truck. Are you kidding me? Uh, Watermelon. We're woke. We are staying woke. <laughs> yes. We are staying woke. Shout out to all the young people. Who got time? They online. They digging up stuff. Girl. They Investigating. Have looking. Digging up This stuff. new generation is not playing, okay? They are not. They ain't playing. I ain't mad at them. True. And they doing it totally different than what our generation would have done. And I, I like it. Time for that. We was too busy making babies. <laughs> I'll just play okay. We were making them to be great for the future. See? And they are great. They are. They're great. They are. Tell Nazir. We need them. He's great today. And I'm going to call him Nazir because I'm his auntie. And <laughs> his new friends can call him Jay <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Right? Same with Jalen. I mean, look, Jalen, oh my gosh, that man. You have a grown man. He is a grown man. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. Okay, so... <laughs> Now we isn't it a trip how we're raising our boys to be men, but still in 2020 there are still some black women out here who have been relegated is that a word to dating men 
who are not behaving as men or some of us are guilty of not letting men be men and we want to be the man and do everything and that's why i love the title of this movie everything but a man but i don't know if i don't know if the men the men were manly men okay because that title could kind of throw you off like what do you mean everything but a man mm -hmm. so about that title so when you told me to watch this movie i did not know what i was getting into because okay. it was I'm not going to say it was misleading, but you know how you read something and you automatically start putting things together right. for yourself. So I started doing that with this movie. And I was like, oh, I was like, I don't want another such and such. But this is a totally different movie. The producer is a woman, a black. She's African woman, actually. Like, really? the, yeah. So. I was like, who is this person who wrote this? Because me and my husband, we was debating. He said, a man had to write this the way this movie ended. Like, this is in the ideal world what a man would expect to happen. Right. But we looked it up, and it was actually a woman who wrote, produced, and directed this movie. Then we write Kudos. Kudos to LeKay because she's okay. a black woman. It was a real woman in filming. Yes. Look, yes. Shout out to the real women out there. Okay, that's what exactly. He thought it was written so written so well that a man had to have come up with that ending. Right. <laughs> right. But it was there was a twist in there because guess what, girl? It wouldn't have been me. Okay. Start off and give everybody. Can you give them a brief breakdown of what happened? So. There's no brief breakdown of this. We have to go in and like, so okay. a successful black woman. She was characterized as an angry black successful woman instead of just a successful black woman. So, and I think too, she put herself out there that way because she just was like, I'm an attorney. I got it going on. I'm pushing my bins. I got this big house. They come right. to work for me. And whether she knew it or not, she was paying for the sex on the side. Like she was just putting herself out there. Okay, so let me break it down. But my she had no man. Wait a minute. She had everything that she needed in her life but a man. Oh, that's what that meant. That she had everything. Oh, like Monica Calhoun, who most people know from the best man, um, the the best man, she played played the wife of Morris Chestnut, who's been trending. Mm -hmm. So shout out to she Monica she did Calhoun very good for not looking for proving that black don't crack. Okay, Monica, black don't crack, baby girl. She looked exactly crack. how she looked in the best man. Twenty years. How ago? many years ago was that? Twenty. Twenty. They just had their 20th year anniversary for that film. And she looks good. And so does Morris Chestnut. But he wasn't in this. The man in the movie that was the star was the guy from Claws. I don't know if you ever watched Claws with Nisi Nash. And, um, yes, but what? He was yes, I did watch that. Boyfriend. His name is Jimmy. Wait a minute. His name is Jimmy Jean-Louis. He's French. I don't know if he's African French and he or speaks French and he's African, but mm -hmm. uh, or if he's from Haiti. <laughs> he's Haitian. Okay. So Monica is your typical independent woman, you know, living the life of Riley, the upper class woman, not you know, lower class, middle class, upper class attorney. She's an attorney. She got everything she wants: the house, the cars, the clothes, the taste, the class everything but she is dating below her pay grade because a lot of women on an upper level tend to date below their pay grade and that is the problem with the real women in film we but, sometimes that happens because you're so busy you don't need a man for money 
You don't need him for the fancy cars, the dinners. You just need a good looking man that's easy on the eyes to handle some plumbing in the house and around the house. Plumbing issues. So, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but my, my thing about that is um, you said, what did you say? You just made a statement that she was but dating below her pay grade. Pay grade. She was dating below her pay grade. So, granted, to me, for me, it wouldn't be about the money, but clearly it was about that for her. She because she wanted them. To, she wanted him to actually change his occupation to because do something she was else. Class, you got to think of an upper class black woman, and this is the problem with the the movement is all about. We are always trying to impress the wrong people. Who is she doing all this for? You know what I'm saying? Like, right? Not for us, not for the men. But are we trying to fit into white society, to a society that's not even with open arms to us? Because clearly, she wasn't being traditional in the, in filling his society of the Haitians as they were depicted in this movie, and him trying mm -hmm. to get a green card, immigrants. She didn't represent your typical black woman, in my opinion. She, she didn't. didn't. She didn't. She didn't represent your typical African woman. She didn't represent your Hispanic minority. And clearly, I don't know, I have to talk to the writer and the producer to find out if she was trying to send a message. Do American women see those hardworking immigrants come over here and they know they'll do whatever for their family, for the green card. You know, they're working hard. They're trying to get citizenship. They're on a mission. So they're going to get it by hook or by crook. And he but, doesn't for no handouts. But the thing is about that, she didn't know all that about him. She just quickly went into this thing and started doing for him. She didn't never take the time to know who he was right. to, to, to do anything. So... The situation she got herself in is because she caused it. She was so desperate to have this man around because it's nowhere in the world you're going to meet a man and just say, oh, you stayed with three of your friends? Come, you know, I got a guest room. You can come stay here and do some work around the house. You just wanted this man there so you know where he was so you could get, get what you want at all times. That's the first boyfriend. And the reason I said it was a pattern of dating below her pay grade, because her first boyfriend was her trainer, her personal. He wasn't her boyfriend. That's the problem with all this. They are not. They were workers for her. She hired these people to do things for her, and then she ended up sleeping with them. She's not even trying to get to know them. That guy clearly knew that. You know what? I'm going to go over to get paid, and I'm get laid. And if I need extra money, Vanessa's going to give it to me. Vanessa got it. Vanessa yeah. was treating him. When the she trainer walked like out talking child. about the car now. She was Hold on. Was like, uh, yeah. Um, you could tell she did it with him, too, because he was like, so you think you could uh, give me an advance on next week? And mm -hmm. she like, uh. she, he's driving a Porsche. Right. <laughs> It was so many things but crazy that about that. Right idea. That was probably her bright idea for him to get a, a better car. And he was probably like, well, if I'm going to be with you, then I'm going to get what you got. And she was probably thinking, not with me paying for it, you not. And what happened? She didn't even stand her ground. I remember dudes just to come by and then be like, um, you, you got $20 for gas? Mm -hmm. like, no. I'm not doing that with you. So you could, to me, that was a pattern. I agree. To me, that was a pattern between him and her because in no way somebody is going to physical, uh, y'all doing training, take it to the bedroom. And then she wasn't even satisfied. Did you see the look on her face? That's what I was thinking. Like, you wasn't even happy. And he was thinking, no. Like, like yeah. And I was like, and then he had the nerve as if he deserved it. I feel like sometimes men do use sex as ammunition to get us to do what they needed to do. Why he didn't ask her for the car note money 
before they had sex. This is their routine. To me, he know when, like you said, she, he used this as the sex as a, you know, break, a weaking point. And she just talked to him like it was his child. You need to do better. You don't need to have this card. You can't pay for you. You're not his mother for he one. Said, Get and, together. He was like, yes, mom. She, that's what I felt like. It was a mother and son conversation. And guess what she did? She took out her paycheck. You know how your son break you down. But like, mom, I want those sneakers. And you like, like, and then you be like, and then you be like, <laughs> <laughs> you better do better. <laughs> right. But see, are we as black women guilty of mothering our men? Because we no, are, first of all, I'm a nurturer too. I'll, I'm gonna just put it out there. But you said, you said our men. A real man ain't going to sit there and allow you to do all that. He's going to come to the scene with his stuff together. No. So it's the ones, you know, some women find it, it's a routine. And as you see, she had the physical therapy guy, the, the, um, not a, a physical therapy guy, but the guy she was exercising with. I can't think of the correct term. But yeah. she had him first. first. And then, then, then she had the, the oh, other man to this guy. It's a cycle. The, this is a cycle for her. Yes. Cycle. But aren't we as black women guilty of this vicious cycle? Because it's a pattern. I've seen it happen over and over again. And it happens with more affluent black women because they have the money to throw away and the spare. Like, we work hard for our money, so we will be like, boy, bye. But if you got the money, you like, and you want the companionship, you got somebody that's coming over weekly, you know? Somebody, yeah. I have heard of women who had everything possible. They don't have love. Yeah. So basically they buy love from these individual and it's a temporary fix because they're still miserable. Every woman that you know have done that, have you heard them like, oh, they're absolutely happy? No, because then they get with their girlfriends and be like, girl, Yes, what right. For this time, all their girlfriends be like, "You did not give him no money, did you? Did you buy him this? Did you buy?" Right. Him this? And why right. Did ask us that because that's what we do. And I'm gonna say we, so that I don't be like y'all and pointing the finger for all intents and purposes. I'm saying we, but I don't. We as we mean we as in me and you. I'm just mm -hmm. we as black women. Right. And guess what? She was a little bit older than both of these men. Well, maybe not that second one. <laughs> well. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go to the bad advice that she was given. The girl to her was. secretary. Now, here her secretary is that got a man that loved her, that wanted to, Want to marry her. Want to have a family.